Jim and Terry Show, coming to you from the Hobbit Hole, still without Jim for another few podcasts. I was going to say, God willing, being well. Um, I'm not sure about the veracity of that statement, so I'll just say, get better soon, my friend Jim. In the meantime, two characters that I find very interesting on one show. David Pacman, liberal, progressive, somebody whose views... I happen to share a lot of, and Vivek Ramaswamy, you may remember for some, from such great hits as I'm on the stage with all the elected uh, or chosen people with enough deep pockets to run for the GOP nominee. Do you remember the days when Vivek Ramaswamy was on stage with all the other hopefuls until they were all run out of cash, run out of town by Trump? What does he have to say that's interesting? He added only one thing that I could see to the color of the GOP, and that was that he was not an old white guy. Um, But outside of that, he had the same kinds of views that we see articulated in the GOP mainstream, which is systems broke, we're victims, and it needs to be changed, and... Well, let's start and get a whole bunch of other things from the horse's mouth. Vivek Ramaswamy, David Backman. I think that there's a managerial machine who's that in decides that? who's going to be churned out. It's not one person, it's a system. And I think it goes back to the way the government's run. I think the people who we elect to run the government are not the ones running the government. I don't think Joe Biden is really making most of the policy decisions that come out of the executive branch of the government. I really but don't. Give an example of someone who's making the decisions. I know you can't, it's not one person, but there must be it's a group. It's not one who's, person. It, well, I'm, I'm resisting the premise, David. It is a machine. That is the Leviathan. I mean, who, may, who, the, who runs the this machine? This is the apparatus. It's, it's the wrong frame. That's the whole point. David, who built it? the machine? Well, I think it's been built over the years from decades of loss of purposeful loss of accountability. I think it was built by people who were elected into office that did not want to actually bear the accountability for their actions. And so quietly devolved power, first from Congress to three letter agencies, from three letter agencies to a managerial class that pervades the public and private sector alike. You don't have to take it from, uh, you know, what, what, what you what you will see as a you know, crazy Republican candidate, uh, you know, far right or whatever you want to label me on your show. Michael Lind has written about this in a lucid manner. I think that there's a horizontal managerial class that pervades the public, private and and intermediate sectors in the United States that's wielding the decisions. I just think it would put a lot of texture to it if you were able to say, you know, Hillary's Susan in the Rice. class, you know, or you know, Susan, Susan Rice. You know, I mean, you, you, you can give you, you can give examples of the Nancy Pelosi's husband, or Ellen DeGeneres, or yeah, you but, know. But, uh, well, at that point, David Pacman's going fishing for some details to flesh out what is seemingly on the surface the typical conspiratorial allegations that the systems broke. Only Trump can fix it. Well, Trump in the American context, but in the Canadian context, it would be only Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives can fix what's broken. Now you've got to sort of break it all down and look at how the conspiracies work, and they work with vague generalities. They use code words and code terms. Anytime you see the phrase three-letter agencies, you know where they're coming from. Anytime you hear managerial class, you're talking about a belief that the whole system is run by minions who do the bidding of whoever pulls the strings, the lovers of power. But what he does go on to say is some things that maybe most of us would agree with, which is maybe, just maybe, we got to get rid of the influence of corporations on policies. So if you're, for example, oil and gas in Alberta or in Canada, you shouldn't be making donations to a political party or you put them all equally towards every political party because they all have to deal with oil and gas. So give equally to all. Some corporations do that. I would argue that corporations should have no business making donations at all. Ban the whole thing. Let's clean it up a bit. Yeah, I agree with that. That's nothing really conspiratorial. It's just saying that, yeah, maybe, and I I would quote the book Corporation, Corporations, uh, two different documentaries produced on the corporations and how they came to rule. 
America. Rule? Yeah, by way of money. Follow the money is always the moniker, whether it's Russian money or it's Chinese money or it's uh, North Korean money. Follow the money from kingdoms, from erit- autocrat, autocratic empires to U.S., Canadian, Western, democratic politics. Why does money tend to flow into democracies on political issues? I think the answer is because where people are free to vote, they're free to be manipulated. And this is the case right now before the uh, CSIS in Canada, looking at the allegation that the DOJ has leveled in the United States about foreign influence in social media attributed to Russia, Russia, Russia. And I've asked this on several of my, not just podcasts, but blogs, are the right wing, the far right, the center right, the less than moderate types, the freedom convoy types, are they the ones most vulnerable to propaganda from foreign influence peddling in and on social media platforms? And I think the answer is going to be coming out that yes, and Rebel News has been named, the Western Standard has been named, um, specific podcasters and influencers, YouTube influencers like Tim Poole have been named. There are a number of Canadians who have been named. So we're looking for how this shakes out and what it does mean in terms of who's getting money from whom. And so far we know Russia is giving $10 million to various social media personalities in order to promote almost holus bolus. Do you know that phrase when you shape food in your mouth into a a ball so you can swallow it more easily? Holus bolus, swallow the entire thing, the whole ball we are swallowing. Well, propaganda works like that, where it's sourced in Russia, Russia Today, and the entire agenda is swallowed by the social media purveyors in the West, in Europe, in Canada, the United States, and appears. And I've always said this, watch the words. If the words and catchphrases are the same words and catchphrases repeated by the Putin propagandists, but they're repeated in the mouths of conservative House of Commons members, by conservative uh, business people, by, well, anybody who's repeating the message sourced somewhere else, you're just a purveyor. You are not the originator. It's not an original idea. So here we go, back to the conspiracy theory, which is there's somebody influencing somebody. And his premise starts with, you can't tell me Joe Biden is capable of making policy decisions. Well, yes, I could and I would up until the point that he stepped aside. And this podcast, to be fair, was filmed before Joe Biden stepped aside. So... Yeah, does it bolster his case that somebody's in charge pulling the string? Somebody said, ah, poor old Joel, he he got us this far. Let's get rid of him and get some other fresh blood. Is that how it all went down? I don't think we'll ever really know. We all have our suspicions about power and how power is brokered, who controls power. Ultimately, this one truth did emerge in the conversation between Pac-Man and Ramaswamy, and that is money. Follow the money. Okay, so... That means corporations with their donations should stop and get a, learn to do with less, I guess, is the motto for me, especially in the Americans when, uh, I forget, is are we over a billion dollars being spent on elections in the United States? What a disgrace. That should never be, in my opinion. So, fair point to Ramaswamy on that. Second point that I think we could all agree on is maybe there is a problem with the donor class. Do you know what that phrase refers to? The people who are billionaires or what's the word that's been going around social media? Bazillionaires. The people with a lot of money to throw out things. The obvious one that they poke at is Elon Musk. And true, I mean, who else could buy an entire social media platform? $44 billion. I'm not sure that that was the best investment, but he did it and he did it. And the results are palpable to me as a user on that Twitter platform. So much right wing, far right points of view being what? 
automated, botized? What do you call these things when you pay for an influence peddling campaign? And this is what was observed in the PC ad campaign where the PC suddenly spiked with bots on social media. Yeah, it happens. You buy influence in the social media day and age. You buy it by buying bots. And they assault people on the internet in various forms and capacities by overwhelming whatever the naysayers are. If you don't agree with them, they slam your post and ask all kinds of ridiculous questions and show that they're not real people. You go to click on them and you see this word not followed by anybody you're following or you you see the dates and see that they're recent people. There's a whole influence peddling campaign that seems to surface around 2022, 2023. People with those dates of joining seem to be suspect as non-real people. What did uh, I learned this from one of Jim's kids, a uh, non-character role or something like that? A non-character player, something along those lines where you just you know you know it's happening, you're sure it's happening, you can't prove that it's happening but it may really be happening and those roles become more important than you think. Anyway, there you go. David Pakman, Vivek Ramaswamy. I can give you the link to David Pakman's show if you're interested in, uh, what do they call it? A liberal wash first thing in the cold, ice cold liberal wash first thing in the morning. Yeah. How about, um, looking for dialogues and points in commonality where we can agree. It's not broken but it needs fixing. Um, that would be a fair assessment to say that uh, you're going to, what the, oh, I'm going to, oh, my good friend, Jim, how I need another brain cell to rub together <laughs> with my singular one that's operating this morning. I'm going to think it was uh, Pierre Polyev who said that it's a nuclear winter for Canada's carbon tax. That's what would happen. And I'm looking at the interest rates falling I'm looking at the GDP rising. I'm looking at unemployment. Well, that's still a problem. I'm not sure about that one. But things aren't really broken. So to claim they are and only you can fix it, that mantra's got to go. Yes, there's things we can do. Like David Pakman and Vivek uh, Ramaswamy. Find things that we can agree on. Yeah, too much money in the system. Games at all on both sides. The Jim and Terry Show, signing off for now. Bye-bye.